Having a foggy brain and trouble sleeping isn't just a sign of aging and stress. In this video, I'll share why they could be symptoms of perimenopause and how to banish brain fog and finally get that deep sleep you've been craving for. When women are trying to deal with insomnia and brain fog, they can feel very overwhelmed with work, family responsibilities and their to-do lists. They can also feel very discouraged because they used to be able to power through their day and still have plenty of energy in the evening to go out with friends or cook a delicious meal. What they may not realize is that insomnia and brain fog are often hormonal imbalances that can happen during perimenopause. Perimenopause is a stage in women's life that usually happens in her 30s and 40s when estrogen and progesterone levels can start to fluctuate. This can result in premenstrual syndrome or PMS, painful periods, sleep issues and brain fog. But you don't have to be get grim and bear all these symptoms. It's all about rebalancing your hormones. Many of the things that cause hormonal imbalances are well within your ability to upgrade. Do you know that we have many endocrine or hormone disruptors in our environment that can increase perimenopausal symptoms from toxins in beauty care, food, water, your home and your office? Type yes or no in the comment box below and feel free to share your experiences or symptoms. And if you find this content helpful, let me know by liking this video or subscribing below. But the key is to have a plan that isn't overwhelming and a guide who can help you understand how all these factors are impacting your hormones. So one of the things that impact a lot of women dealing with perimenopausal symptoms is estrogen dominance. This is when you have trouble releasing estrogen after your monthly cycle and it is stored inside your body. High levels of estrogen can develop naturally, but too much of estrogen can also result from taking certain medications, for example, estrogen replacement therapy, a popular treatment for symptoms of menopause may cause estrogen to reach problematic levels. Your body may also develop low testosterone or low progesterone levels which can upset your hormonal balance. If you have estrogen levels that are abnormally high relative to your progesterone levels, it's known as estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance, although not an official diagnosis, is an all too common health concern for many women and men. Although hormone levels might be within the normal range, estrogen dominance occurs when the level of estrogen is relatively high compared to the level of progesterone and testosterone, also described as an estrogen to progesterone ratio that is shifted too far to the estrogen side of the ratio and it has historically been described as hormonal imbalance in women. More recently, however, hormone imbalances in men are being better understood and you can you can also get to read more. I uh, will give you more information in another video. To better understand estrogen dominance, you should first know how estrogen and progesterone function in your body. Estrogen is a collective term for so various types of these hormones: estrone, a weaker form that is higher in postmenopausal women; estradiol, that is the most common present in women and men; and estiol helps your body prepare for childbirth during pregnancy. Primarily, it's made in the ovaries. These estrogens are also produced in the adrenal glands and in fatty tissues. Endocrine disruptors are chemicals that mimic or interfere with hormones. One category is called xenoestrogens and have estrogen-like effects in your body. So imagine you already have estrogen and then you get these artificial or xenoestrogens which are found in skin care products like parabens, benzophenone, processed foods like preservatives like BPA, BHA, food colorings like FD and C, red color number three, plastics, BPA and thalates, chlorine containing house products like household cleaners and bleached paper towels, and many more, including insecticides. Simple ways to decrease xenoestrogen exposure is to include the following Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 guide for purchasing produce, reading labels of beauty and cleaning products, using glass containers to store food, and eating fewer processed foods. Estrogen seems to lay, uh, play a protective role against hepatic fat accumulation, so like fatty liver, by suppressing the lipogenesis and gluconeogenesis, that means production of lipids, as well as production of glucose from other sources besides carbohydrates. 
and it promotes lipolysis or breakdown of fat and glycogen storage or storage of the glucose. Interestingly, estrogen can increase both cholesterol synthesis and secretion. According to the Environmental Working Group, studies show that an average American is exposed to daily exposed to 200 chemical toxins and carries as many as 91 of them in their body. There are a lot of factors which affect whether the liver performs its critical functions effectively. Poor lifestyle choices can put too much pressure on this delicate organ. And here's what can contribute to our toxic load. Stress can increase your toxic load by increasing your cravings for high fat, high sugar foods. Enzymes that break down the fats and detoxify prescription drugs are also negatively impacted by stress. Toxic substances from the environment or in your diet can impact your mood and energy almost immediately, creating a reaction up to 24 hours. Or they can build up to cause years of ill health, depression, anxiety and chronic disease. The liver comes into play when you consume anything of a toxic nature to your system and can be very different for every individual. During this time, enzymes and nutrients that are required by the liver for detoxification are used in excess levels in the system, disrupting sleep, mood, digestion, and energy, where these enzymes are also necessary. Your liver is designed to process these toxins and have them created or taken out through your, from your body. However, problems develop when toxic load becomes too high and the disease process then starts. So in our practice, we use the COPE methodology, C for cellular detoxification, O for optimization of hormones, P for performance nutrition, and E for enhanced mind mastery. Now, as you understood that if you don't detoxify well, or if you have a higher toxic load, your body will go into inflammation, you will have hormonal imbalance, it will upset your stress hormones and cause a lot of inflammation. So we have to detoxify at the cellular level. That's why the C for cellular detoxification. You have to optimize the hormones. I just explained to you if you have estrogen dominance, if you have deficiency in progesterone and testosterone, your body can act differently. So we got to optimize it and keep it to the optimal level. P for performance nutrition. You need nutrients, macros, micros at every step in every metabolic pathway, whether you're getting rid of toxins, whether you're producing hormones, whether you're breaking down hormones, whether you're getting rid of these uh, xenoestrogens. So you need the right nutrition too for the building blocks of your body, muscle, tissue, bone, everything. E is for enhanced mind mastery. So keeping yourself calm, interacting with the stress hormones effectively so that you can manage your stress and prevent progression of disease. Learning methods which can keep you, your mind and body and take you towards wellness and vitality. So that's why we use the scope methodology and not one of the pillars can do the whole job. You need all four C-O-P-E. So thank you so much for watching. And if you are interested in partnering with me, click the link below to sign up for a complimentary strategy session. Thank you.